So I said to myself, yes, I can do something in life that, where I can show people I'm not just a, a disabled person. Alex, Alex, wake up, darling. Wake up and smell the coffee. Le varange, tu attends, attends ça quand tu vois pas les fesses là. Is there really some coffee? I'll make some. <laughs> My name is Alexander Hull. I'm 19 years old, and I was born with spina bifida and hydrocephalus. I remember the baby tapes. Uh, I was in the, in the incubator and uh, they were there beside me. My, I was on my mom's lap. See, my mom couldn't, my mom or anybody could not hold me for I think the first two months. If they wanted me to be somewhat in their arms, they had to have a pillow on their lap and um, I would have to be on the pillow. They would have to hold me that way. Mimi, do you mind ordering some supplies for me? I'm running out of a lot of it. But are you okay? Want me to call OMS? Yes, please. Okay, do you want me to let you know? Yeah. Uh, it's catheters. Okay, wait, I write it down. Gloves, the pants, and green pads. Underwear depends super. Uh, six prevail disposable washcloth. Six prevail underpad. Then uh, her uh, worker called me and she said, uh, I can see that you're not spending much money on medical supplies. I said, what do you mean? But because she said, uh, I guess she called OMS and they said that I was not buying. But I was buying from OMS what I had to like the catheter the gloves, uh, the pads, the no, the wet like the wet ones, and the underpads. Yeah, yeah. the underpads. Okay, but for the um, uh, uh, briefs that are depends, I was waiting to have a sale somewhere at a pharmacy, but mostly at Walmart. Okay, so last time I did get them at Walmart, it was at eleven seventy three for a pack of twenty. Okay, but. Uh, then she said, but what are you doing with the rest of the money? I said, the money is aside. If she needs more during the month, the money's there. You know what I mean? But I guess her, she was thinking that I, she was spending on something else than medical supplies with that amount. So I said, listen, I just bought, uh, I don't know, 10 or 12, I did that time. And I said, uh, I paid $11.73. I said, we're saving a lot, you know. No, I want you to buy at OMS, nowhere else. But OMS sells a pack of brief for eighteen thirty-two dollars Oh yeah, a comment that a man said, he said maybe Mr. Adami, the one who did the, the article, should uh, look deeper in OMS because there's a gimmick there. Okay, with the government. Uh, we were alone for 18 years, my mom and I, and then she had a baby. My daughter had two. 
take care of her. Then she had to quit her job because she was all by herself with her. She's always been by herself. Her father left when she was one year old. So my daughter had to take care of her. And, you know, she was just getting the, the minimum salary. And uh, if she needed somebody to, to babysit her, they would charge $10, $15 an hour. She was making, what, nine something then, or maybe less. So she had to quit and go on welfare and take care of Alex. So that was her life. She stayed with Alex on mm -hmm. she was uh, She was a good mom and everything. Great mom. Great mom. Fantastic. So they said, well, Alex is of age to have her own place if she wants, with Ottawa housing, okay? So that's what they did. So they find Alex a two bedroom, and then they found my daughter a two bedroom with her other daughter. And that's how we ended up together. Me, I was living with my boyfriend. I left him behind and I said goodbye so long, moving with my granddaughter. Not till the end of high school. Um, it, it, that was an awful experience. I remember, I think it was, I was in my second year into it. I uh, went in front of the auditorium, an auditorium full of grade nine students, um, explaining that even if I'm in a wheelchair and I don't use my legs, I can still use my brain and my words and I can still communicate. And I told them that if they had any questions, um, about my disability, not to be shy, to just come and ask me. I remember I went to the cafeteria once and I went to a table full of people and when they saw me come, they left. Thank you very much. Hopefully I'll have time to uh, get some work folder copied for home. Yeah. 70? 70. 75? 75, yeah. Now I'm back in adult high school. So much better, the, the teachers are better there. Way, which one's the penny because of the color? Mm -hmm. Because they're really like... Um, my name is Sarah Lougheed Grass and I am a placement student at John Howard Society. So Alexandra has been coming here since last August. She always asks for lots of homework. So that's one thing that really distinguishes her from a lot of the students is that she brings a lot of work home with her and she comes back with a big pile of stuff for our, us to mark and review with her. So it's really good because she, she's very dedicated to the school program. And I don't do that stuff until I know my homework is done. I don't watch the hockey game. Most of the time I just tape it because I know I have homework and I'll watch it the next day. I don't, I never ever watch it till my homework is done. That's how important to me all this stuff is. I put it all of it ahead before the fun stuff, I like to call it. The fun, easy, chilling stuff. Misha, look, it's a small budge. Misha, hey, because it's fair. So, Carlson Foligno and Neil made a, a, a goal, right? No. Uh, yeah, I think so, but I think what Mom was saying, the first goal, I'm not sure. If, which, ooh, Chris Neal. Oh, that's Chris Neal. Yeah. Another entertaining thing, at, at Chio, you remember that, what that was every Christmas night? Like, who used to come? The Ottawa Senators. When I don't have school or martial arts or homework, um, I like to just go on the computer and look at them, you know, like their videos, see what, what's up, and 
where they are and standings and stuff like that. They're doing good. They're in sixth place. They're in sixth place. Good luck, guys. You're going to do it. <laughs> My number one favorite is, that's my number one. Oh, I love that question. Jason Spezza, you are awesome. You are just so wonderful. You, oh. Okay, you, his wife's gonna be jealous if she sees that. <laughs> well, I have a few favorites, but he's my number one. He's just, I have an autograph from him, actually. These are um, more autographs from the senator. This is um, a collectible poster that Daniel Elfitson signed to me for Christmas. Hey mom, how are you? Yeah? Uh, uh, we, we went through a lot together, you know, through thick and thin. Um, she saw me go through some medical things and I saw her go through some medical things. As well as myself, my mom has seizures. So I've seen her have a few seizures. Um, one was very, very bad, actually. She ended up in a coma for about two weeks, and I still literally have nightmares about this day. Um, it was, I think, a f 5 a.m. on a Saturday morning. She, she was getting out of bed to sorry, go to the washroom, and uh, when she came out, she had fallen on the floor. And back then, she had a queen size bed and like get into bed. She had to crawl into the bed and then grab that pole and get into bed. And I, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't, she didn't tell me she was gonna start having a seizure. Um, so luckily we had the lifeline button and uh, she, uh, she started having the seizure at around five something, something in the morning and uh, about Ten minutes after, I, you know, I was just so surprised about what happened that I didn't think about the button. And this may seem weird, but she actually told me in the middle of the seizure to press the button, so I did. And um, actually, when the paramedics came in, they started putting tubes down her throat to help her breathe because she was choking on her blood and her puke, and she was having trouble breathing. So, And by the time I finally got to the emergency room, and got to see her in the ICU. She was uh, in a coma. <sighs> Tubes everywhere. I just, I don't even remember if I can, if I was able to see her face because of all the tubes and the mask. It was awful. I still have nightmares about it. 
And uh, she finally, finally woke up after two weeks. That's, that's all I remember from that day. I don't know if it's because I was 10 years old when it happened, which was, which I find is pretty young, and, or it's because I just shut it out. I, I think it's, I think it's because I shut it out. I wanted to just shut that. I try so hard to shut it out, but I can't. It's, I have nightmares about it still. Okay, wait. Alex? 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 Let me see you. Baby? Baby? Okay, 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 okay. Now, if I pinch her, she should come back, if she's not too gone. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's going to feel like druggy. You just had a big seizure, lawyer. First of all, you fainted, okay. and then you, you you went like when you shake. Okay. I made you come back. Okay. But then you went again because you were like sometimes you know, we make her come back. She doesn't like it because she's not finished, and when mm -hmm. she's not finished, she doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. She has to finish. That's why she went. It's weird, though. Attention. Martial arts has changed my life. It is just wonderful. I didn't think I could go from how I was feeling to feeling great about myself and feeling like it's okay to feel great about yourself. Pretty soon, I have white and brown belt. Another brown stripe, then the black, and then brown belt. I. I've finally been around people who don't make fun of me. I'm treated equally, even if I'm the only one there in a wheelchair. Um, Alex really exemplifies patience to me as well. Um, she, that's something that I find she can teach the other students. There are times when her uh, paratranspo will be one, two hours late uh, to pick her up after class. And, you know, she uh, never complains. She's, she's very, very patient. Right hand up. Well, um, three times a week I teach um, children uh, Four, white to yellow five, kids. Uh, six, seven, they're just awesome, so eight, lovely and so cute. Nine, and ten. ten. Yeah. Good. At the tournament that we were at a couple of weeks ago, they're interested in uh, your power, your rhythm, your balance, your focus, all of the things that we want martial arts to bring out in someone. Because that is a, a very broad tournament and invites many, many different schools of different styles. So they don't have the same kind of strict structure within uh, the judging that we would if we were at a traditional uh, sanctioned karate tournament. Well, today I did um, 
uh, my first big championship, uh, the Martial Arts Open it's called, and I did a kata and some wheelchair self-defense. Alexandra's mother. Nice to meet all of you. Um, today was a very overwhelming day. It's her first national competition and she did win um, second place in uh, kata and third place um, in uh, self-defense. I am extremely, extremely proud of my daughter. She has come a long way from being sick hours and on land of being sick and now she's kicking butt. My little love bug. <laughs> if she says I'll do something, she doesn't. Um, because I said kept saying to myself all my life, yes I can. Um, it's because I wanted to be more than what people were making me feel, more than just the person in the wheelchair. <coughs> what does next week hold for you? It's big plans. Next week, karate in school, the usual. Those are good plans. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. My future? Hmm. Uh, owning my own dojo. I would love to travel the world, but at the same time, you know, I'd love to be married, you know, be a good wife, a supporting wife for what he would like to do. That's a big thing for me. Hey, me? Yeah. Can you do me a favor, please? Yeah. Can you get me the two trophies I won at the championship? Hey, me, the me. Oh, me. You look as too. Say hi to him, this is called. Say hi to him, this is called.